Yeah, so it was mid-March uh, 2014. I remember I'd just gotten fired from work, uh, and so I didn't know about anything better to do than, you know, go for a sailing trip to the Bahamas. So naturally, I called Al up. We got the phone call. Yeah, that was what changed the whole trip. It started out as a pretty, you know, good day. I told everyone be there promptly at around 9 a.m. We all got there about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, so then after that, we casted lines and went out there and we, you know, had a good day of sailing ahead. But then again, it was a rather warmer day. And uh, with the wind and the weather conditions the way that they were, especially with uh, the temperature of the water, it made conditions right for a dense fog. We're going back in and then all of a sudden this huge fog just starts rolling in and all of a sudden we can't see five feet in front of us. A dense fog, so thick you could cut it with a knife. I mean, I had just broken up with my girlfriend and, and I was thinking, everything's cloudy right now. And all I had was my Garmin GPS. Thank you. So we had to just fall by GPS because we couldn't see markers or buoys or anything like that unless they were like a few feet in front of us. You know, everyone was doing a really good job. Uh, Jordan was holding his, himself very well. Alex was doing, uh, doing what he does best. So I just got back where I was on the seat. I didn't do anything the whole trip. I was piloting the vessel and Peter was calling me out to meet my GPS locations. So we, we thought, well, who's the best to put on navigating this puppy in? I mean, this is a 30-foot sailing vessel. I mean, we're talking, you know, Coast Guard approval. We thought our good friend, Uncle Peter Serretta. So what was going on was that there was a GPS that I was looking at to direct the, uh, the helmsman slash captain were to uh, go to and uh, there was about a one second delay in it so every time I would tell him to go a certain direction it wouldn't show up uh, the correction wouldn't show up on the GPS for about one second and then you go back and forth and back and forth and, and then it happened at one point I remember though Peter uh, Peter was telling me, like, all right, you know, Polly, head up, head port five degrees or starboard two degrees and 20 degrees port, 30 degrees starboard. We were making good time. I wasn't going very, we were making about two knots and we had the tide going with us. I'm like, well, Peter, you know, where do I head now? He's like, head port, Polly, head port 30 degrees. I'm like, I am. And he still said, it's not correcting, so I'm thinking that the GPS is locked up or something. You know, I asked Peter, I said, hey, Peter. <laughs> How fast are we going? He says, there, there, is, there is none. He says, zero. And then I, I realized, oh, we must have run aground. <laughs> and, uh, we had been beached. Oh, I gotta blame the captain. Yeah. Yeah, because he let it all happen. You know, his gear was down, or it wasn't functioning properly, so... I can only be as good as I uh, am given gear, I guess. We, we definitely hit rock bottom that day. Fortunately, the tide was coming in, and I was able to back off of the, of the, of, out of, off the shore and then get back on track again. One nice thing that happened was there was a boat that, a power boat that passed in front of us. Hope came up from behind in the shape of a 20 seven foot sea ray. What I did next was just follow them the entire night and they were a nice little, you know, beacon of light that we uh, that we were able to follow and they were actually going to the same marina that we were and everyone made it back safe. Man, you know, hallelujah. You know, it was definitely a good day. It was a really good day.